Hello everyone, welcome to my second uh, video tutorial. Uh, today we're going to cover just a basic bunker shot, uh, greenside bunker. Uh, these strike fear into many of us and it's certainly at one time, if you'd put me in, in here, I would have had very little chance of getting out. I was petrified of bunker shots. But if we follow some basic rules, they're fairly simplistic. I know you'll all say, well, the bunkers vary on all the courses and it's the biggest gripe of members, I'm sure, at every golf club. But if we get the basic one right, we can adapt to most other situations. And in another video, I'll go through more difficult lies, bear lies, which I think is all our bugbears, or plug lies, uphill by the face, downhill lie, which is probably the most difficult. I'll go through those another time if that's okay. Uh, the sand is reasonable in here today. Uh, in terms of depth, so I've got a sand iron with a 56 degrees loft and a 12 degree bounce. I want the, the club to slice through the sand. I don't want it to dig in too much. So this is the club I would use if there's a reasonable amount of sand beneath the board. And you can tell that when you walk into the bunker, obviously. The address position uh, is no different than if I was trying to hit this 50, 60 yards. And of course, the length of the swing that I will use in a minute is capable of hitting it that sort of distance if I don't hit the sand first. And again, we'll cover that in just a moment. So basic address position from the other angle in a second, you'll see that I'm slightly open. I'll run through that in just a moment's time. So from this side here, ball position slightly forward or center, normal address position. You can see the club face is open. We'll cover that again. And I'm now ready to go. Now the length of swing that I need to only hit the ball 25, 30 feet is obviously much greater than it would be if I was off the grass because we're hitting the sand first. So the sand acts like a buffer, like a cushion, and that then obviously dissipates the power. Well, why wouldn't we hit the ball cleanly? The, the, the timing required would be too precise. So we're taking a wedge of sand out, which then knocks the ball out, and I need a bigger swing to be able to get through the sand and let that explosion of sand knock the ball out. So I play a couple of shots from here. If you look at the basic rhythm and the length of the swing. So quite a big swing, a lazy sort of lethargic swing, but quite a lot of energy as well. The ball's only gone probably 20 feet or so. Um, but again, because of the speed of that, there's quite a lot of spin on the ball. And again, that stopped within probably about 18 inches of where it landed. So again, a nice lazy swing right through the shot, maintain the speed through the ball. Again, I'll go through uh, reasons why people don't get out of bunkers in just a moment. So Ben, if you can come to the back view, please. So from this angle here, we stand just slightly open to the target line. So my feet, my hips, and my shoulders are probably 15, 20 degrees left of the target. I then point my club face at the target. So the club face is open to my body, not open to my target line. Now, depending on the severity of the lip, where we might need to lay the, the lay back even more and have it more open, one of the common errors we see <coughs> in teaching is people having the blade so far open that it's actually pointing miles right to the actual target. So they might get elevation on it, but they don't get any propulsion to it, and the ball often goes to the right. So I'm pointing slightly left of the target. So now my swing plane is coming across the ball because my shoulders are open. But because the club face is square or open to my body, but pointing at the target, the ball then should go straight. Again, from this angle, trying to get the club to position again where I can hit down on the ball. So, nice lazy swing. Right through the shot. And again, loads of spin on the ball. Stop very, very quickly. So, the common fault dissipation. Why most people don't get out of bunkers when they don't get out is the club just decelerates and there isn't enough speed there to create the energy that I need. We're all afraid of thinning the ball across the green, <coughs> and I've done that many, many thousands of times in my career, but there's no other way of playing the shot other than committing to it and having the speed to let the explosion knock the ball out. The other thing, of course, is we need to hit the sand at the right place. Now, is it an inch behind the ball, an inch and a half? Well, it depends on the texture of the sand. It depends on how deep the sand is. Uh, I don't specifically look at a, a millimeter perfect position, I just feel it I, about an inch, an inch and a half behind the ball, depending on the sand, as I've said. There are lots of analogies used out there, like it's a, a poached egg or a fried egg, and we're hitting the, the white out and the yolk, which is the ball, then comes out. You know, if that helps you, that's fine. Um, but any of you who've had lessons from me uh, privately will know that the, the line exercise, as I call it, is a fantastic practice to zero in at the right place. So very simple to do. 
sorry there's no rakes around at the moment, but if I draw a line in the sand, and that uh, line is now opposite the middle of my feet, so the ball then would be about an inch and, inch and a half ahead of that line. And what I want to practice without a ball is just trying to get that divot, the impact position, starting on that line and going right through. starting at the same place every time. Now if I obviously have 10 or 12 swings and the divots are starting at different points then I must be hitting different shots. So providing we have the energy and we're using a, the correct club, so providing we have the speed and we hit the sand at the right place then the ball will come out whether we judge it properly again or not that takes practice of course and I'm pretty rusty them I don't practice them anymore uh, but they really are annoyingly the easiest shot in golf if you know what to do and you spend a little bit of time working at it. So that's a basic bunker shot, splash shot, greenside bunker shot. We'll come on to more difficult lives in another video, but that's something for you to think about when you get back to the club and you can get into the practice bunkers that we've got. Okay, take care, see you soon, bye-bye.